everybody doing today? It's Choice. I'm here to talk about Trucker Pad today. I had someone uh, message me there in orientation, and they asked, um, learning to get their, learning to drive and get their CDL. They asked me if there are any apps that I use on my phone or any of the devices that I have that I use out here on the road. There are a few apps that I actually use. I'm going to do a video about each one. But today, what I'm talking about today is Trucker Path. So I'm going to start off with that app. Um, Trucker Path you can have on the Android. You can have on your iPhone. Uh, you can have on your iPad. I'm actually using my iPad right now to do this video. And I have Trucker Path on my iPad too. Because when I stop at the end of the day, I just my iPad, the screen is big and I like using it basically anyway so trucker path you know if uh, you're on your ios obviously you would go to your app your app store click on the app store trucker path is this one in the middle on the top in the middle yours would say get or install of course you would get or install the app mine i already have so i'm just going to hit open and it opens trucker path so this is what the interface looks like is 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 Really, what I like Trucker Path is because it has hella features. <clears throat> it has so many features. I use it for many different reasons. It's very accurate and it's easy. Very easy to use. Simple. I like simple and I like Trucker. I love Trucker Path personally. Um, <clears throat> the menu is up here in the top left corner. I really don't use the menu. For any reason whatsoever, I don't need it, so I don't use it. If you guys want to go through the menu on your own, that's fine. But I'm not going to take any of your time going through it because I don't use it. And I'm showing, I'm doing this video to show you how I use Trucker Path and my experience. Like I do all the videos that I post, it's just from my experience. I'm not a master at Trucker Path. I'm not a techie. I'm none of that. In my experience, this is how I've used Trucker Path and what I use it for. So, in the top right corner, um, you have this little icon next to the, the search glass. What that is, is the air view. Basically like a plane view. I don't use that because I can't see shit. So what I do is, I leave it like that. It's very easy, very simplified and um, easy for me to read. Going down the right hand side of your uh, phone or whatever device you have, you have a plus sign which will zoom you in. As you can see with this little blue dot here and you can zoom you out. And then you have a spearhead here that let's say we were over here. If you wanted to find yourself quick, hit the spearhead. It will zoom in to where you are in the center of the screen. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see 86.4 miles. Basically, that's like a little legend. The little line under it is showing you that that's the length of 86.4 miles. If you zoom in, you will see that now that the length of that line on this map is 10.6 miles. I use that sometimes, very rarely, but I do use that sometimes. So now we'll get into the features and the juicy, juicy part of this app that I, that I use and how I use it. Down in the bottom right corner, you have places. Now places are all the places that you can select what you want Trucker Path to show you. I like Pilot and Flying J's. I also like Loves, so I tap on Loves. As you can see, the hearts are the Love's truck stops. There's one up here. There's one up here. There's one right here. We have TA. TA right there. And Petro, it's the same company. We have way stations. If you don't know what a way station is, by now, and you're in the industry, you're in trouble. <laughs> Way stations, um, but why is it good to see where the way stations are? I'll show you that in a minute, but um, you're going to come up on them regardless. So 
unless you're overweight and you're trying to avoid a weigh station, it doesn't even matter where they're at. You're going to you're gonna hit a weigh station. You're going to go through a weigh station. There's no avoiding that unless you plan to or you have to. So I'm not even going to get into that right now. Weigh stations, rest areas, which is where I'm actually parked at right now. We'll take all these out and I'll show you. I'm right here at this rest station, northbound I-90. So, other places are parking. It'll show you where it has parking for your truck. Let's shrink this. It's a little easier to see when you look at it that way, the parking. Walmarts. It's always a ton of Walmarts when you hit Walmart. Why would you need a Walmart? Because you might want to park, uh, pull in and go shopping. The truck, you might need food for your truck. You might need something for your truck just that you know you can get from Walmart. So you might want to scoot over to the nearest Walmart. The nearest Walmart to me would probably be here. And I can see where it says directions, 12 miles. Now that is usually an estimate because that's 12 miles by car i don't know why they do that but that's 12 miles by car so it's going to be in or around 12 miles though so don't worry about it i will tell you this though just to give you the heads up it's a myth and it is not true that you can park at every walmart that it is okay to park at all walmarts the corporation, Walmart the corporation, is cut, is trucker friendly, um, but each individual Walmart, Walmart cannot facilitate truck parking for this reason. They do not always own the real estate that the Walmart is on. Super Walmarts, for the most part, will allow trucking somewhere in their lot, truck parking somewhere in their lot. You have the smaller Walmarts that are not super Walmarts that are located in plazas with a bunch of other stores. A lot of the times, Walmart does not own that real estate. They lease that real estate. Therefore, they can't give the permission to park a truck there. And if there's security guards there, the ones that ride around in little Jeep or little trucks all day and do nothing with the little yellow siren, they maybe just might tell you that you have to go. And again, I'm only telling you from experience. I learned from experience. And sure enough, I did ask the security guard why it was, and he explained to me that I could go 45 miles out to the Super Walmart, but the Walmart that I was at, I couldn't leave my truck there and go home because they don't own that land. They lease that land, therefore they cannot give me the permission to park there. The security guard that are usually um, patrolling those areas, they're not Walmart security guards. They're security guards that are hired by the people that own the land to do just that, to regulate parking, to, to protect their real estate it, it, to an extent, obviously. So, just know that all Walmarts you can't park at. It's not okay um, to just park your truck. If you're going to park your truck and go in and shop and get out, that's fine. I'm talking about doing 10-hour resets and especially overnight parking. You might be able to get away with a 10-hour reset during the day, but overnight parking, like at the smaller Walmarts, especially Walmarts that are not open all t for 24 hours, look out be careful of that so that's how you find walmart next we'll talk about cat scales cat scales again if you're in in, in the industry and you're already on the road and you're a rookie and you don't know what a scale is more power to you you're going to have some issues out here but cat scales obviously we need to get to a cat scale as soon as we get out of the shipper to be sure we're okay and we're not overweight so why not pull up Trucker Path, look at the cat scale. My nearest cat scale is only six miles from where I'm at. I pull out of the shipper. I go straight to the scale. I weigh up, slide my tandems, and I'm out of there. And I'm on the road, no problems. 
why is now this is when way stations come into play cat scale way station at the same time i'm leaving the shipper i want to know that i'm going to hit a cat scale before i hit a way station right that makes sense i don't want to go through a way station before i get scaled out so i want to make sure that i'm hitting the cat scale before i hit a way station so maybe i don't and it depends on which way I'm going. So if I'm going all the way up 90, I don't have to, I'm not going to hit a way station until who the, who knows when. If my destination isn't this far, then I don't even have to get scale. But let's say I'm going up 39 north. Now, I see I got my way station here. I better be sure that I'm scaled before I get to that way station. Let's say I'm going 90 south. I better get scaled before I hit that way station, right? So when you're coming out of the shipper, you hit way stations, you hit cat scales, or you just hit cat scales, make sure that you scale before you hit the way station. Do yourself that favor. Now, if you're overweight, you don't want to hit a way station. Let's just say you don't want to hit a way station overweight. All right, avoid that altogether. It's not a good idea, okay? They have the TAs, petrols, we show, I showed you that, truck stops. Now when we hit truck stops, truck, truck stops are always, has, always have a higher population in an area than any of the, um, chain, the, the bigger mega truck stops because a lot of these truck stops are just small convenience store truck stops. They're, uh, they are truck stop friendly not all of them, but not all of them, I repeat, not all of them have truck parking spots. So you have to be aware, not all of them facilitate truck parking. There's probably truck parking somewhere near it, on the side of the road. Some of them do not have truck parking on the premises. So how do we find all that out? How do we find out if they have truck parking? How do we find out if they have showers? How do we find out if they have laundry? The way we find that out is we tap on it, and all the information we need on that truck stop is located here for us. It tells you a rating. It's a 4.6 .6 stars. It tells you what loves it is and find a look, find a lack. Wisconsin, um, number 587. It tells you that there's some spots updated 53 minutes ago. Now the updating, let's talk about that real fast. What you do is when you pull into these spots, Trucker Path will ask you, will immediately pop up and it will populate a prompt that says, please update status. Does this, are there lots of spots, some spots, or is the lot full? I always update it for this reason. Because when I update the truck, the trucker's path, I'm helping another trucker out on the road to know whether or not the lot has some spots, whether the lot is full or whether the lot is, um, there's lots of spots. When truckers don't update trucker path, they're not helping truckers out on the road to know whether the lot is available. And it's very important to do that. It's very important to help each other out here too. Damn it. Uh, I think that's like something, the camaraderie I used to hear about in trucking was just like unbreakable was like was intense it was incredible so these days I don't, i'm not too sure um the same applies but i would like to think that it, we could get back to that so if you have trucker path and you pull in a parking lot take the second to update the status so this status is telling me 53 minutes ago someone updated it says some spots so that and if I go down here, it says truck parking spots, 90 truck parking spots. It's pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to find a spot in there. There's 90 spots, truck parking spots, and someone said that there's some spots. I'm going to find one. Okay, so now pilots. When we do this, I'm glad I picked one. So this one says the lot is full, right? And this one has only 40 spots. Anything under 50 that says the lot is full is not a place that I'm going to go to on the end of my clock. I'm going to get to that in a second and explain. Um, as you can see, oh, 
Laundry, no. Showers, yes. Loves do not have laundries. Pilots and flying jays, flying jays, most of the time do have laundry. This flying jay does have laundry. They all have showers. Um, all the pilots and flying jays have showers. All the loves have showers. But loves do not have laundry. So if you want to park somewhere overnight or end your shift and do laundry and take a shower, don't go to loves. Even though I like to take my showers at loves more than I do at pilots. Because they're just cleaner. From my experience. Um, I do take showers at pilots. I'm not saying that I don't. But if you gave me a choice to choose, I would choose loves. Oh, one last feature that I didn't show. that I And what's crazy is I use this feature in my first two months out on the road because, like, my biggest fear was this. I never want to hit a low-clearance bridge. I think that just says a lot about a trucker that hits a low-clearance bridge. Like, what's wrong with you? Did you not see the sign? Were you not watching where you were going? Do you not know the size of your truck? That's like trying to stick your fist in your mouth. You just can't. I don't, I don't understand that. So I never want to be that, that truck driver that hits a low clearance bridge. So they have that. Where is it? Low clearance. Now... If you can see that right here, right near Milwaukee, if I tap on that, it tells me clearance, 11 foot. I think that's great. Now, if I was somewhere in Milwaukee, or let's say I was going up 94 in Oak Creek, and I seen myself going towards that low clearance bridge, I would already be aware that it's in front of me, aware that I'm coming up on it, looking for signs, just being very careful of what, how I'm proceeding. So I think that that's a great uh, feature. I used it, like I said, religiously. Like the, It never came off the map. I always kept it populated. I'd never cleared them out. Now I'm getting so much better with um, getting so much more comfortable with the road. I am comfortable with the road. I'm reading all my signs. I see the signs. I'm not so nervous as I was being out here in that first month. So I don't really use it unless sometimes I bring it up when I'm in like there's a spot in Pennsylvania that I go deliver steel that has a bunch of low clearance bridges. And I bring it up just because I like that, that um, just for just just for reassurance. I don't ever want to be that truck driver that hits a low clearance bridge. It's just, like I said, it's like trying to put your fist in the mouth, in your fist in your mouth. You know you can't do that. So <laughs> what were you thinking? So, or you weren't thinking, basically. I don't know. All right, so how do I use this at the end of my day? Let's say I'm coming up on my, yeah, basically at the end of my day. So the way I run my truck, the way I run my days are, I get my first eight-hour clock. Within that eight hours, I have to take a half-hour break. I push my clock as far as I can. So I take my half-hour break between seven and eight hours, usually. That's if I'm just running the truck straight, usually. That's what I do. Or sometimes I might save myself some time and take it at a fuel stop. I'll get my fuel on my half hour break, but that's not really ideal. What I do, sometimes it can be, it depends on your day, and this is why trip planning is important, but most of the time, my half hour break comes between the seventh and the eighth hour. This way, I know I've run for eight hours, I only have three more hours left on my clock to drive. That half hour, I'm gonna wipe that away um, because unless I can get the most out of the road and this is the way I find out so let's say I'm in my seventh and eighth hour I only have uh let's say I have two hours left on my clock because um an hour of my drive time was using getting unloaded right um we have two hours on my clock I'm on the freeway I can do 60 miles per hour on the freeway 
Two hours is 120 minutes. 120 divided by 60 obviously is two. That's two hours. So what am I doing? I'm doing 60 miles, 60 miles an hour. That's a mile a minute. So I have basically 120 miles, but I don't. I don't want to go somewhere that's 120 miles with 120 minutes. I'm going to go into violation. Plus, sometimes, let's say there's construction. Let's say there's 55 mile per hour zones. Let's say you get stuck behind two people that are just going too slow. Let's say there's hills where you're not doing 60 miles per hour, like Pennsylvania I-80. Um, and you're just trying to get up that hill. You're 78,000 pounds heavy, and you can't get up that hill. Only you, The only way you can get up that hill is doing 35 miles per hour. So you don't want to push it that close. And I've done that in the past, too. And this is why I'm telling you these things, because from experience... You don't want to go into violation, just really, I mean, you don't have to pat yourself on the back, you did a good day, you worked hard, shut down on time. There's no reason you got to try and do the 120 miles in 120 minutes. So what I do is, remember, I'm right here, right? I got 120 minutes on my clock. I check that pilot because I know I'm going up uh, up I-90. It says it's 64 miles. 64 miles. That means I got a whole other hour I can burn. I'm not going to stop there. What am I going to do? I'm going to go back. I'm going to keep going. What pops up? Flying J. Flying J is 99 miles. That is perfect. 120 minutes, 99 miles. I can make that. That gives me 20 minutes to park, do my post trip, whatever. Granted, that's if I get there in 100 minutes. But 99 miles, let's say that's 99 minutes or a little more. But that, to me, that's like this is a great example, actually. I'm just lucky that popped up. So I can get 99 miles in 120 minutes. That I believe I can do that. So I believe anyone can do that. So this would be the Flying J I shoot for. The next thing I want to check out is how many parking spots does it have? Is the lot full? Does it have some spots? Does it have lots of spots? It says it has some spots. And it was only updated an hour ago. That means that it's, I mean, it's pretty accurate. If it was updated just an hour ago, that's pretty accurate. Now, because it's the end of my day, what I want to do is I want to go and look down here see how many truck parking spots it says it has 150 so even if that said the lot is full with a facility that big i would probably go there i'm just saying i would probably go there now if i went to let's say nope this pilot the lot is full Anything under 50 spots and even 50, I'm a little leery about that. The lot is full, only 40 spots. I would, If I was headed in that direction, I definitely would not go to that pilot. I'd find another place to go. So that's how I plan the end of my day, my half hour break between my seventh and eighth hour during that half hour break. I can see which way I'm going. I know how much time I got on my hands. If I had three more hours... I would go even further out. That's 205 miles, so that's a little too far. I couldn't get there. Um, three hours is like 180, 180 miles. That's 170 miles. That's playing it really close, playing it really close. But now this is where truck stops come involved. The smaller truck stops. Let's say I really want to get the most out of my clock. I hit truck stops and bam. Now I have a lot of truck stops to choose from to see where I can park in the right amount of time. Right? But always be careful. Not all truck stops. Like this truck stop says only has 10 truck, uh, truck parking spots. You have to be careful. I know there's one here. I want to show you guys real quick. 
okay, here we go, rowing right here. Let's say we were headed down this way. We were on 14, and we're our clock is running, and we, or let's say we're over here on 90. We know we were going to go over to 14, but we see that there's no truck stops on the way there. Our clock is running low. We click on this truck stop because it's the closest one. It's 49 miles away. Let's say um, we were had an hour. This truck stop is 64 miles away, so we know we can't go past this truck stop. So we have to we have to decide whether or not it's even smart to leave this pilot yet. Go down 14, get to this truck stop, and guess what? Truck and spoke truck parking spots no overnight parking yes but that might be just applicable to cars so you can call them and ask them if they have overnight truck parking spots but just be careful be careful what you're looking at and that's how I plan the end of my day I do not plan the beginning of my day I mean the end of my day in the beginning of my day because I never know how the day is going to go you never know what's going to happen out here on the road you never know where you're going to be, what your time is looking like. So that's why between the 7th and 8th hour, when I'm taking my half hour break, or if I take my half hour break any time before that, I'm looking at trucker path and I'm figuring out what the end of my shift is going to look like. Where I'm going to park, where I'm going to be for the night. Will I, take, will I be able to take a shower? Will I be able to do laundry? Are there parking spots? Is the lot full? How many parking spots are there? Trucker Path is going to tell you all of that. So that's that's how I use Trucker Path. I hope that helps. I think it is a must-have app for anybody in the trucking industry, not just rookies. Um, I can bet, I'd bet my paychecks on it that millions of truckers or tons of truckers, a majority of the truckers out here on the road, do have trucker path so i hope that helps someone um if you have any questions let me know leave a comment like unlike doesn't matter subscribe i really appreciate it leave a comment i will get back to you as soon as i can if you follow me you know that i do get back to you as soon as i can um and hit the bell next to the subscri subscribe button and this way you'll be notified of any more of my future videos peace